bless morning friends folks today it is august 21st 2023 so let's dive right into the boat man's lesson for the day this one is prayer and purity we have a quote from julian of norwich as long as we meddle with any kind of sin we shall never clearly see the blessed face of our lord sin misses the mark and that comes straight from the lord himself and Proverbs, y'all know I'm a big fan of Proverbs, 15 and 29 reads, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears a prayer of the righteous. Keep that in mind. Elijah prayed for rain and it rained. Elijah prayed again and there was no rain. So he was a righteous man in the eyes of God, so God answered his prayers. And he'll answer yours and mine as well. Inward. As much as we'd like to think that there is no correlation between our sin and the depth of our prayer life, the biblical witness is clear. The sin in the heart affects the prayers of the mouth. There is a cleansing that must happen before we enter the throne room of God. There is an emptying that must take place before God occupies the throne of our heart. The interference must be dealt with so the communication will be clear. God takes sin seriously, far more seriously than we do. A heart that tolerates it is in no condition to commune with the Holy One. If prayer is fellowship, and it is, there can be none of it. When a corrupt soul tries to get intimate with the spotlessly pure God, while oil and water, there is no intermingling between the holy and the profane. Sin and prayer do not mix. The principle raises a serious concern for us. We know deep down that we are sinful. How then can we ever pray? By the purifying that comes through Jesus, he has made us clean. He has opened the curtain at the entrance to the Holy of, Holy of Holies. We may enter in a fellowship with the righteous God, but we take this for granted. Perhaps we thought that was a once and for all event that salvation implied a permanent cleansing. It does, of course. We are forever seen as righteous in God's eyes. But that righteousness must be lived if faith is to be vibrant, a disobedient soul will find little in common with the Lord of all creation. Some know their position in Christ, but will not live it. Prayer cannot thrive in such a context. That makes sense. Indeed, the conclusion. Have you ever felt that your relationship with God, while genuinely secure, functions awkwardly? Do your prayers seem out of sync with His will? By His mercy, God is calling you closer. You must drop your sin to draw near to him, but it is infinitely worthwhile exchange. It is an infinitely worthwhile exchange. Sin hinders prayer and fellowship. Confess it, repent of it, right your wrongs, and get close to the heart of God. That makes sense. I'm always using Annie for my example. When our day goes by, I don't think about my wife. The Lord brought her to me to be a blessing. She was the greatest lesson that I have ever learned anything from. Being together with her for 17 years, it was a union from God in the first place. But we did things backwards. You know, we had sex early. Uh, what would you call that? I forget what the fornication. And before we had Mariah. And then when I had Mariah, I still didn't marry her. But I remember her asking me, you know, when are you going to marry me? When are you going to marry me? She asked me that a lot. And then after a while, she's like, you ain't never going to marry me. I said, yes, I am, babe. It's just I'm waiting for the time to be right. And what I meant by that was having a solid job, which I now have. And when I finally got hired on by the city in 2010, I married her November 17, 2010. And I met her in 2004. So it, it took a while. But finally, it, you know... It came to that point, but then she left our marriage May 2nd, 2015, and that battle was on. It was on, him. I'm The pain that I felt, man, it was, there's nothing that compares to it, but only her passing away December 23rd, 2021. But I sinned. I fell short. I went back to drinking some beer, smoking some cigarettes, smoking some Marlboros. And I didn't do it very often when I did, it hindered my prayer. It made me a lot want to go to church. You know, here I am being dirty, you know. Who am I to go to church? And here comes the hypocrite thing and this and that. And then after a while, I'd clean up, give my heart to the, back to the Lord. I'd be like, Lord, forgive me for what I did. I don't want to return to it. Then finally, 2017, I had enough. Like, I'm tired of going back to this thing because 
as a fool repeats his foolishness, a dog returns to its vomit. I'm not stupid like a dog. I'm not going to go out there and just keep picking up my vomit and eating it, which is what I'm doing every time that I drink a beer and smoke some Marlboros. I was like, I give this to you. I don't want it no more. Take the desire from my heart, mind, soul, and strength so that I have joy. And if I got joy, I got strength. And I, the only joy that I can truly have that gives me strength is from your peace that surpasses all understanding. So there it is right there, you know. And then when I prayed, I, I prayed hard. And I was like, Lord, I consider our marriage reconciled already by faith. And Annie was still running around. And then after six years, she came home. And in that six year, our marriage reconciled, and then she reconciled the ultimate marriage. She reconciled that first unto God the Father. And then little did I know, our marriage reconciled second, and then little did I know, she would return home to the true marriage supper of the Lamb of God. And that's a hard thing for a husband to take or a wife to take. But man, now my prayers, when they go, they blow righteously like they should because I ask the Lord to cleanse me every day, every morning on my knees when I wake up at six, on the weekend seven, eight, nine, yeah. <laughs> well, Monday through Friday, I get up at six every morning. And that's what I do. Be blessed on your journey. Have a clean heart and pray hard.